Today is Thursday, June 26th, and the McClellan oscillator started the day the same as it had on Thursday. Wednesday and Thursday were the same. Uh, FinViz tells us that advancers and decliners were significantly in favor of the advancers. So that is going to take the uh, McClellan oscillator a bit above zero. And who knows, we could chatter like this for some time, or like this, or like this, or like this. Um, but we're going to have to wait and see if there's momentum to go up further. Remember, Saturday is the big day. Um, typical volume in the Dow that we expect. NASDAQ had average relative volume, S&P and 500 a little bit lower, uh, mostly green. As I said, advancers, decliners, all, all, almost three to one. The Dow finished down 10. It dropped in the morning, picked up in the afternoon and dropped. NASDAQ was on a steady uh, trajectory up and the S&P 500 had a dip uh, before lunch and then a steady move up. So because I wasn't close to the screen or to Twitter or anything, I don't know why that is. I just am not excited about the market and not looking to enter any more trades. I have um, more than 20%, maybe 25% now of uh, cash. Let's look at the charts, starting with the S&P. This is the neckline of the inverse head and shoulders that we started looking at early, earlier this week. And we said that it's typical for stocks to break the neckline, come back down and test it, which it has done one, two days, and now it's popped up. So we said that was a possibility, but we now we wait to see if there's another day of follow through before getting excited. So if it's up tomorrow and it'll only be up if somebody says that the deal in China looks like it can be made Saturday or the handshake agreement. But we heard the Chinese today say that there are some immovables for them. And one is Huawei and one is um, don't tell us to buy any more exports that we've already agreed to. So it doesn't sound like this is much of a win for America at this point. Uh, Apple finished at the bottom of the range for the day, but the Chiku Span um, is still um, above the cloud. Let's look at it on a one week. Same story. This is a uh, the SMI. Um, it's a stochastic that tells you how fast price is changing um, on a slow basis, which is um, 40 days. That is the blue one. So Apple is still in an upward trend, but on the short term, it's plateaued and it's coming down again. And it's a pretty good indicator. Let's look at April 23rd. Look what happened when this peaked uh, with that green candle. We started to move down went up a bit and then we started to move down again. So this slow, or sorry, um, this, is the, this is the red, this is the fast stochastic based on 12 days. The slow stochastic, look at it, again, we'll look at it April 23rd here when it started to peak. We had the slow and the fast both at the top. That would be an indicator that we're overbought. And we've had this slow turn down, goes from yellow to light blue. And then once it's dark blue, it's bottomed out. And when it bottomed out and the slow stochastic started to move up, price started to move up. So we're going to start looking at those stochastics. This was developed by Anne-Marie Bain um, at Anne-Marie Trades. The SMI is not her particular uh, discovery, but the, the 40 and the 12 um, averages are uh, the ones that she prefers to use. She even has a triple stochastic and I've um, not used that in a while. Caterpillar uh, finished the day with a bit of a of a hammer here. We've finally broken through this congestion for the Chiku span of all of these averages. That is a pretty bullish sign. I would expect Caterpillar to be moving up. Volume isn't great. Below average for four days in a row, so all days this week. It's very China dependent and very infrastructure dependent. Um, none of those seem to be happening anytime soon. I got rid of 700 shares, left me with 44 shares in the gold miners. 
Uh, I sold them at 2523. Uh, the stock went a little bit lower than that today, finished at 2531. But I'm going to wait to see some movement up because look at the stochastics. They're both at the top. They're both overbought the short term and the long term. So we see the long term started to make its way up and the short term pulled it along. The short term kept high, dra dragging the longer term average up. But now they're both, they've both peaked right here and they're starting to move downwards. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. Let's just put a little marker here. I'm going to keep an eye on that. By the way, motive sale is going on sale July the 9th. And um, I'm going to talk about it at the very end of the video, but there's a $60 a month lease option that's now available and I think you know I shelled out thousands of dollars for this years ago and never regretted it um, but if I could have paid sixty dollars a month I sure would have done that um, WDC pretty good day above the 50 uh, simple moving average the 8 is moving up the 50 ex exponential is starting to turn around the 200 exponential is starting to flatten um, but our simple moving averages are still down. WDC is a stock that I'm glad I held on to. Tomorrow it goes X dividend. Uh, Whirlpool has broken that trend line. And we talked about, we've been talking about this trend line for a long time. And it all started back here. Its first point was July the 5th. It came in January made a, a second, uh, an ability to draw a line between only two points, and actually we weren't watching it. When it made three, and then pulled back, and then it made a fourth, we started to watch it. We were waiting for the break on the fourth attempt at this trend line. It never happened. We, start, we watched it go down, we started buying around here, and unloaded it when it hit the trend line, expecting a drop, and that's what we saw. But now after five days, we're back up again. But we need to find follow through. We didn't get follow through here. And I was fooled thinking we were going to go through. And I bought 300 shares, later 300 more shares, sold some 140 weekly calls, some 142 weekly calls, kept rolling those, made a few thousand dollars profit, and then got out for a $500 loss. Um, taken out of the profits overall the whole trading around trading from here to here was profitable I want to get back into Whirlpool but I won't do it until Monday when I know what's happened with uh, uh, Trump and Chi and I want to see another candle above that trend line what we're going to see is it move above the trend line and come back down and touch I will buy some on Monday if we're above the trend line then I'll wait for a pullback and a touch of the trend line and then I'll wait for confirmation and buy more when it comes back up again. So that's it for today. The only I'm not going to talk about stocks now. I'm just going to talk about Motive Wave. If you look at my site, I posted a video this morning for seven minutes, seven and a half minutes of 10 reasons why I think Motive Wave is terrific software. And on July the 9th through the 15th, uh, these folks uh, who are based in Canada, which, were, which is where I'm from, they're based in Toronto, and just a good bunch of guys. Um, one guy in particular is the genius behind this software. And I've been with it now for five years and it's just been fabulous. It has never, ever, ever um, given me a blue screen of death. I use a Mac, but it's never given me a problem. Um, it's just remarkable software and it just keeps getting better. I started with it when it was version three, um, helped beta the program in four, five, and six. And now six is a beta. It's rock solid, and it, ro and it was rock solid from the day the beta was released. Um, so take a look at that video, and if you're interested in buying it, download the trial now because you have to have been a trial member to get the $60 a month lease price or the 20% discounted um, uh, owner licenses. Thanks for listening.